The moon hung low in the sky, casting a silver light over the stone fortress, bathing everything in an eerie glow. I stood at my post, guarding the fortress. It was too late for me to be here, but I couldn't help myself. Being this close to her and not seeing her? That was impossible. The wooden door to Zoe's room was slightly open, just a sliver of light peeking through, like it was inviting me in. I leaned against the cold stone wall for a moment, gathering myself. My breath was shaky, and I cursed under it, knowing full well that coming here was reckless. Still, my feet moved before my brain could catch up. I pushed the door open a little more, careful not to make any noise. Inside, the room was dim, with a small candle flickering on the bedside table. And there she was, Zoe. She looked peaceful, innocent even, but something about her always got to me. It was like she had this quiet strength underneath that soft exterior, and I could never get enough of it. Tonight, though, it was her beauty that had me standing, staring. Her body wrapped in the soft linen gown which failed to hide her curves. The moonlight illuminated her skin, making it seem like it shimmered. Her dark brown hair cascaded across the pillow, and her lips, those lips, parted slightly in her sleep. The sight of her teased me, a longing I had tried to push away, but there was no denying it. I wanted her beneath me, tangled in those sheets, lost in the heat of the moment. But I couldn't. This was not the right time. We weren't free yet. Zoe, I whispered in her ears, my voice low, like the night was holding its breath with me. She didn't stir. I leaned in closer, my breath grazing the curve of her neck, and before I could stop myself, I pressed a kiss against her shoulder, gently stripping the lace down, soft and slow, just enough to feel the warmth of her skin, just enough to wake her without startling her. She stirred then, a soft sigh escaping her lips as her eyes fluttered open. For a moment, she seemed lost, but then her gaze found mine, and a small smile tugged at the corners of her mouth. Eric, she whispered, her voice still heavy with sleep. I just came to see you, I said softly. I'll take you out soon, I swear. Zoe's smile grew a little, but there was something else behind it. Something like sadness. Or maybe it was just the weight of everything we were going through. Her fingers reached out, brushing against my arm, and even that small touch made my skin tingle, like her warmth was seeping into me. I know, she whispered back, her eyes soft but tired. I wanted to kiss her again. Hell, I wanted to do a lot more than that. But instead, I settled for brushing a stray strand of hair behind her ear. The intimacy between us was thick in the air, almost too much for me to handle. And yet, it wasn't enough. It would never be enough. But the reality is, this isn't just some forbidden romance. I wasn't just some soldier risking his neck to see the girl he loved. It is much bigger than you could ever imagine. I am Eric. Thirty years old werewolf. But don't go thinking I'm some mindless beast. I'm very much in control. Strong, yes. Aggressive, fierce. But I'm also calm. Patient. I act with reason, not impulse. I stand six feet tall and carry more weight than you might think. I got sharp jawline with light blue eyes. And when I cross my arms, the muscles in my biceps flexes slightly. I have been staying in a pack where harmony existed once. All the men and women were happy living together. But things are not same as before. It started a few months ago, when female werewolves started to disappear, one by one, like shadows slipping through our fingers. No matter how hard we tried to hold on, they were gone. We used to train together fight together, even laugh together. The bond was strong, unbreakable. 
But now, it was crumbling. The pack wasn't the same. The sudden disappearance of the women led to an alarming drop in the population. Our pack's population dwindled with each passing day. The prospect of mating felt like a distant dream. The desperation was suffocating, males fighting amongst themselves for the few females left. Some were even trying to steal them away, forcing them into partnerships they didn't want. It wasn't just about survival anymore. It was chaos. And the females, the ones still with us, were shattered by the horror they were facing. Couples that once had a future were now torn apart. It broke my heart to see them like that. I clenched my fists as I sat in a riverbank of my territory, staring at the waves rolling in like they had all the answers I couldn't find. Things were different now. I remember when our pack was full, back when the females were still with us. The pack was restless, and I was running out of time. Just as I was lost in my thoughts, I heard heavy footsteps running toward me. I turned to see Greg, one of the younger wolves from my pack, breathing hard as he reached me. Eric! he shouted, hands on his knees as he tried to catch his breath. Did you hear the news? I raised an eyebrow, my stomach already nodding. What now? Zoe, the Alpha's daughter from the nearby territory. She's gone. Disappeared like the others. I stood up, my chest tightening. Zoe? Her pack was strong, and her father was one of the most respected alphas around. If even they couldn't protect their females, then who could? This wasn't just a crisis anymore. This was a full-blown disaster. Their pack's in chaos, Greg continued, straightening up. Her father, he's desperate. He came to speak to our alpha. Let's find out, I said, rising from where I had been sitting feeling the weight of anticipation settle over me. As we all stood outside the Alpha's cabin, the entire pack had gathered, and you could practically hear the pounding of hearts beneath the murmur of whispers. Everyone was restless, anxious. I could see it in the way they stood, shuffling feet, eyes darting toward the entrance, waiting for something, for hope. Greg stood next to me, arms crossed, his eyes locked on the cabin door like it held all the answers. What do you think they would come up with? Greg asked in a low voice. Let's see what they have to say. The mysterious disappearance of the females had already caused too much chaos all over. I said my muscles tensing as I thought of what they were up against. This wasn't just some pack rivalry. It was savagery at its worst. The cabin door creaked open, and every head turned. Our Alpha, a tall, imposing figure with deep-set eyes, stepped out first, followed by Zoe's father, his silver hair catching the light of the fading sun. He looked older than the last time I'd seen him, more frail, weighed down by loss and worry. The crowd rippled with hushed whispers. The question was on everyone's lips. What did they agree on? Greg leaned in toward me, what do you think they'll do? He asked curiously. I shrugged, but my gut already knew. Something big was coming. Something no one would want to volunteer for. One of the minister, our PAX advisor, stepped forward with a paper in his hand. A man of few words but heavy authority. He stepped between the two alphas, clearing his throat before addressing the pack. His voice rang out clear, slicing through the silence. The decision has been made, the minister began, pausing to let the weight of his words sink in. A bold declaration has been issued. Whoever rescues the missing females will be named the new Alpha of Zoe's pack. The murmur of whispers turned into a low roar. You could see it in the faces of every wolf there, eyes wide, jaws clenched. Being an Alpha meant power, respect, leadership. It was the highest honor. But no one wanted to take the risk. Greg whistled low under his breath. That's one hell of a prize. But who's going to take it? 
I watched as the pack shifted uncomfortably. They wanted it. Oh, they wanted it bad. But fear kept them rooted in place. Not a single soul moved. Everyone was waiting for someone else to volunteer, but no one dared. I could feel the tension building, the weight of silence pressing in. My jaw tightened. I didn't like it. The idea of those women being held captive, suffering. It made my blood burn. And seeing all these warriors standing around doing nothing, that made it worse. My decision was made before I even knew it. I stepped forward. All eyes turned to me. I could feel the heat of their stares, but I kept my gaze locked on the Alpha. I'll go, I said, my voice steady and firm. I'll bring them back. There was a beat of silence, then whispers erupted like wildfire. Some looked at me with respect, others with pity. Greg clapped me on the shoulder, but his eyes were filled with concern. Eric, you sure about this? I nodded. It needs to be done. Just as I was about to turn and head to prepare, another voice broke through the crowd. Wait! I turned to see the weakest of the werewolf stepping forward, his slim frame looking almost out of place among the towering wolves. He wasn't what you'd call physically imposing. His build was more lean than strong, and he'd always been the quiet one. His pack always teased for not being as fierce as the rest of us. But his eyes, there was something in them. Determination. I'm Leon from Zoe's pack. I am coming with you, he said, his voice clear, though there was a slight tremble beneath it. Zoe was my childhood friend. I have to go. The crowd stirred. More whispers. More doubt. Leon wasn't a fighter. He wasn't built for battle. Everyone knew that. I glanced at him, measuring his resolve. His hands were clenched tight, his jaw set. But there was a flicker of something deeper. Fear. I hesitated. Leon, this isn't... I know what this is, Eric, he interrupted, his voice firm. I'm not as strong as you. I'm not as fast. Everyone makes fun of me in my pack, but I'm smart, and I know I can help. You need someone who thinks ahead, and I need to prove my worth. I need to do this. I studied him for a long moment, weighing my options. He wasn't wrong. Leon was sharp one of the brightest minds in the pack, even if he didn't have the muscles to back it up. And in a mission like this, brains could be just as important as brawn. I sighed. Fine, but you listen to me, and you don't try to play hero. Got it? He nodded, his expression serious. Got it. The crowd fell silent again as the two of us stood there, the only ones willing to take on the challenge. The weight of what we were about to do pressed heavy on my shoulders, but I pushed it aside. There was no room for fear, only action. As we turned to leave, the minister's voice echoed once more. May the strength of the pack go with you. I glanced at Leon, who was already staring ahead, his face set in grim determination. This wasn't going to be easy, but we didn't have a choice. The women needed us, and I wasn't going to let them down. The things were to get a lot more complicated. The enemy we were up against was ruthless, and we were walking straight into the lion's den. But one thing was clear. I wasn't going to let them take any more of our females. Not if I could help it. As I walked away from the pack with my chest high, it wasn't just the beginning of a rescue mission. It was the start of something much bigger something that would test everything we knew about loyalty, love, and survival. And in the middle of it all, there were all the women along with Zoe, the Alpha's daughter, waiting to be found. The wind was sharp as it cut through the trees, whistling like a warning. Leon and I trudged through the dense underbrush, each step muffled by the thick layer of leaves beneath our boots. The weight of what we were about to face pressed down on me like a boulder. I had been on dangerous missions before, but this one felt different. 
heavier, more personal. Leon walked beside me, his gaze flicking nervously at every sound. He wasn't built for this, not physically anyway. His frame was slighter than mine, his muscles not as defined, but I couldn't help but notice how quick his eyes darted, picking up on things I might have missed. There was a tension in the air between us, unspoken but tangible. You know, for a guy who's supposed to be afraid of everything, you sure did jump at the chance to come along, I muttered, trying to lighten the mood. Leon glanced at me, a small, tight smile playing on his lips. Zoe, she's my childhood friend, but she is like my family as well. If I didn't come, what kind of friend would I be? I nodded, respecting the weight of his words. Family was everything in our world, something I understood too well. After a few more miles of silence, we reached the edge of a territory I knew wasn't friendly. A third pack, smaller than ours, but with a reputation for being... territorial, to say the least. The Alpha's den lay ahead, guarded by two massive wolves. As we approached, their eyes narrowed, and their bodies tensed, ready for a fight. I raised my hand slowly. We come in peace. We need to speak with your Alpha. One of the wolves, a grizzled brute with a scar running down his snout, growled low but nodded toward the entrance. We were allowed in, but I could feel the weight of their suspicion on us like a physical thing. Inside the Alpha's den, the air was thick with tension. The Alpha, an older wolf with graying fur and a calculating stare, sat on a throne of stone, his gaze piercing. He didn't trust us, and I didn't blame him. What business do you have in my territory? He asked, voice rough like gravel. I stepped forward, meeting his gaze. We're looking for the missing females from our pack. Upon hearing this, the Alpha leaned back, considering my words. Well, our pack has suffered the same losses. His fingers tapped rhythmically on the armrest of his stone throne, a sign of his irritation. Luca, that bastard. He's been taking our women for months now. Marries the ones he finds beautiful enough and keeps the rest as hostages. To him, they're toys, objects to control and manipulate, not people with lives and stories of their own. His cruelty lies in how casually he strips them of their freedom, turning their fear into his entertainment. Leon stiffened beside me, his hands curling into fists. I could see the fear in his eyes, the thought of Zoe in Luca's hands clearly haunting him. And you've done nothing to stop him? I asked, unable to keep the edge out of my voice. The Alpha's eyes narrowed. We've tried. Sent warriors, scouts. But Luca's army? It's too large. Too strong. We've lost too many already. There was a quiet resignation in his voice that made my blood boil. They had given up. The women of his pack were just... lost to him. I felt a surge of anger but kept it in check. We'll stop him, I said, more to myself than to the Alpha. The older wolf raised an eyebrow, clearly skeptical, but there was a hint of respect in his eyes. Then I'll give you directions to his territory, but don't expect a warm welcome. As we left the den, Leon was uncharacteristically quiet. His brow furrowed, lips pressed into a thin line. I nudged him lightly with my shoulder. You good? He glanced at me, his face pale. Zoe, she's beautiful and kind. Luca, he's going to want her for himself. I could hear the pain in his voice, Leon continued, his voice soft. She's the only one who never looked at me like I was weaker than the rest. Always had my back, even when the others didn't. I owe her everything. I could see the admiration in his eyes, the way his voice softened when he spoke about her. It was clear Zoe was more than just a friend, a sister who was his strength, the one person who believed in him when no one else did. 
His words painted a picture of her, and I found myself wondering about this woman we were risking everything to save. She sounds... remarkable, I said, my voice quieter than usual. Leon continued with a thoughtful smile. Zoe. She's something else, man. It's not just the way she looks, though she's got this kind of effortless beauty. Her hair. It falls in these soft waves, like it always has a mind of its own. And those eyes. They're this deep shade of green, almost like the forest after rain. You know the type. Calm, but intense. And her smile? It's the kind that sneaks up on you, makes you feel like the world just got a little brighter. There's a softness to her, but also this quiet strength, like she's been through a lot but never lets it break her. She doesn't need to say much to leave an impression. It's just... Zoe. As we set off toward Luca's territory, the atmosphere shifted. The trees seemed darker, the air heavier, like the land itself was warning us of the danger ahead. But despite the tension, I was imagining her. Those sea-green eyes, the kindness she showed Leon, the fire she must have had to survive in a world like this. Zoe. This woman I hadn't even met yet was already filling my thoughts. Hey, I called to Leon, breaking the silence. Don't worry, we're getting her back. He looked at me eyes filled with doubt, but also hope. Yeah, we better. The path ahead was long and treacherous, but there was no turning back now, not when there was so much at stake. As night began to fall, we made camp under a large oak tree, the scent of damp earth mixing with the cool night air. Leon sat beside the fire, lost in thought, his face illuminated by the flickering flames. I stretched out on the ground, my muscles aching from the day's journey. You ever think about what comes after? Leon asked, breaking the silence. I glanced over at him, raising an eyebrow. After what? After we find them. What happens then? I shrugged, not sure how to answer. We bring them home. That's all that matters. Leon stared into the fire his expression hard to read. Yeah, but what if it's too late? What if Luca's already- Don't, I cut him off, my voice firm. We're not thinking like that. We'll get there in time. Leon sighed, rubbing his hands over his face. I hope you're right, man. I really do. I didn't have any more words of comfort, but I knew one thing for sure. I wasn't about to let Luca get away with this not while I had breath in my lungs. As the fire crackled softly, I found my thoughts drifting back to Zoe. I hadn't even met her, but somehow I felt a connection, like I needed to protect her, not just for Leon, but for myself too. I didn't know what it was, but there was something about this mission that felt different. Maybe it was the stakes, maybe it was Leon's admiration for her, or maybe it was just the way my gut twisted every time I thought about her in Luca's hands. As I leaned against a rock, my eyes grew heavy. I closed it for a second. And then, I felt something. Different. I opened my eyes to see her. Zoe. She stood before me, her sea-green eyes locking with mine. She looked stunning, more beautiful than I imagined. Her long hair caught in the moonlight, her presence warm and intoxicating. She moved closer, her hand brushing against my arm. I shivered at the contact which made my heat pick up its beat. Her touch was soft. I've been waiting for you, she whispered, her voice like a soft breeze. She placed her hand over my heart, and I wondered if she felt it racing. My hands finding their way to her waist, pulling her closer. She didn't resist. Instead, she leaned in, her lips just inches from mine. For a moment, everything was perfect, until she began to fade. My eyes snapped open, and the cold reality hit me. It was just a dream. 
Zoe was still out there, missing. And it was up to me to find her. No more distractions. This time, I'd bring her back for real. The cold air stung my face as Leon and I pushed forward, our boots crunching over the frost-laden ground. We had been traveling for hours. The sun had dipped below the horizon by the time we reached the witch's cottage. It was small and unassuming, nestled between tall, gnarled trees. A thin layer of smoke curled from the chimney, and the whole place had an eerie stillness to it, like the woods themselves were holding their breath. Leon hesitated for a moment before pushing open the door. The inside was warm, a stark contrast to the cold outside, and the smell of herbs and something sweet filled the air. The witch stood near the hearth, her back turned to us as she stirred a bubbling pot. When she turned to face us, my breath caught in my throat. Her dress clung to her like it was barely there at all, thin and see-through enough that every curve of her body was visible. Her long, dark hair tumbled down her back, and when she moved, it was like she was gliding, not walking. Her eyes, a deep, seductive green, locked onto mine, and I felt my pulse quicken. My inner wolf was rising, but I controlled myself. Well, well, she purred, her voice smooth as silk. What brings you to my little corner of the woods? Leon cleared his throat, but I could tell he wasn't immune to her either. We need your help, he said. We're going after Luca. At the mention of Luca's name, the witch's expression darkened. She set her stirring spoon down and sauntered over to us, her hips swaying in a way that made it impossible not to notice. Luca, she said, the word dripping with disdain. I'm tired of him myself. She moved closer, her fingers grazing my arm as she circled around me, and it took everything in me not to shiver at the touch. He's visited me many times, always demanding weird things, always wanting more. I'm fed up with him. Her voice was low now, almost a whisper, as she stopped in front of me, her eyes trailing down my chest. Perhaps I can help you. I swallowed hard, trying to ignore the way my body was reacting to her. Her presence was intoxicating, like a drug I hadn't meant to take but couldn't shake off. How? I asked, my voice rougher than I intended. She smiled a slow, wicked smile that sent a shiver down my spine. I can give you a potion. When you're ready to strike, just sprinkle it into the air. It'll put Luca and his entire army to sleep. But it won't affect anyone from outside his territory. She handed me the potion, and I was suddenly aware of how close she was to me. Her perfume was intoxicating, and for a moment my inner wolf rose and I thought about leaning in, closing the gap between us. But then Zoe's face flashed in my mind. Her smile, the way her eyes lit up when she laughed, the sound of her voice. I couldn't betray her, not like this. I stepped back, shaking off the witch's touch. I can't, I said, my voice firm, though my heart was still racing. I'm with someone. The witch's smile faded slightly but there was still a glint of mischief in her eyes. Pity, she said softly, before turning back to Leon. The potion is yours. Use it wisely. We took the potion and left the cottage, the cold night air biting at my skin as we stepped outside. My head was still spinning from the encounter, but I knew one thing for sure. I had to stay focused. Zoe was counting on me, and I wasn't about to let her down. As Leon and I reached the outskirts of Luca's territory, the tension between us grew stronger. The forest we moved through felt more dense, as if the trees themselves held their breath. Every step brought us closer to danger, and with it, the reality of what we were about to do set in. The plan was risky, no, downright insane, but it was the only way. We couldn't storm in with brute force, we'd be outnumbered within seconds. So instead, we'd blend in, infiltrate the pack, get close to Luca and figure out where Zoe was being held. 
My mind kept drifting back to her, the way she looked in my dream. That haunting beauty, her green eyes like the ocean during a storm, the feel of her soft skin as she melted into my arms. I shook the thought away. There was no time for fantasy. Zoe was in real danger, and this wasn't some fairy tale where everything just worked out. We had to play this smart. Leon broke the silence. You know, if anyone asks, I'm your cousin, from a distant pack. What's our story again? I glanced at him, his brown hair already tangled from the journey, and smirked. We were driven out by an alpha who went rogue, left us for dead. Now we're looking for a new home. Simple. Stick to it. Leon wasn't built like most werewolves, but he had a sharp mind, and I had respect for his intelligence. He saw things others didn't, and right now, that was more valuable than any amount of brute strength. His intelligence was our secret weapon. I realized I didn't make any mistake bringing him with me. We reached the edge of the main camp by dusk, the sky bleeding with hues of pink and orange. Fires flickered in the distance, casting shadows over the makeshift tents and wooden cabins. Soldiers, mostly men, paced around, their shoulders tense, eyes suspicious of anyone new. I tugged my cloak tighter around me, my muscles twitching beneath the fabric, itching to transform and tear through them all. But that wasn't the plan. Not yet. We'll need to split up, Leon whispered. I'll keep to the outskirts, gather intel. You're going to have to get close to Luca. I nodded, feeling the weight of it all settle on my shoulders. Got it. Meet me at the riverbank tonight. With that, we went our separate ways. I walked towards the camp's heart, head held high. I had to look like I belonged, like I wasn't phased by the brutality that hung in the air like smoke. I spotted Luca's men sparring near a fire pit, their growls and snarls echoing through the camp. I joined them, my fists itching for a fight. One of the guards, a burly wolf with a scar across his cheek, grinned as I approached. New blood, eh? Let's see what you've got. I cracked my knuckles, rolling my shoulders as I stepped into the circle. I'm not here to play, I muttered, my voice low. The men around us chuckled but I could feel their tension. They were sizing me up, testing if I could be trusted, if I could fit in. The sparring match began. The man came at me hard, his fists flying, but I ducked and weaved, every move calculated and deliberate. I could feel the strength coursing through my veins, the animal inside me desperate to tear free. But I kept it under control. I couldn't afford to lose it now. After a few well-placed hits, the man went down, groaning. I stood over him, breathing heavy but steady. That enough for you? I grinned, wiping the sweat from my brow. The other soldiers clapped, nodding in approval. I had earned their respect. Now, I just had to get closer to Luca. Later that night, I met Leon by the riverbank. The moonlight glinted off the water as he crouched beside me, his voice low. I've been listening to the soldiers. There's unrest here. Luca's pack isn't as solid as we thought. Some of them are unhappy with how he runs things. Too much blood, too many missing people. They're afraid he's gone mad. I frowned, running a hand through my hair. Good. We can use that. What about Zoe? Leon's face darkened. I heard a rumor. Luca's planning to marry her. He wants to bind her to his pack through some twisted ceremony. It's happening soon, Eric. We don't have much time. My stomach churned at the thought of Zoe. Leon continued. She is trapped in Luca's fortress, forced into something she didn't want. Zoe is kept in a royal room with all amenities. That's how he keeps the women whom he wants to marry. There are many beautiful women like Zoe who are kept inside the fortress. I could practically feel her fear, her desperation. The image of her in that dream, soft, vulnerable, needing me, flooded my mind again. But this time it wasn't some fantasy. It was real, 
Where did he keep the other women? I asked curiously. I am still not able to find out where he kept other women, Leon said in a sad tone. But we will find soon. You keep working on the soldiers. We need a rebellion brewing by the time I get all the women and Zoe out. Leon nodded, his eyes serious. We'll make it happen. That night, I barely slept. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw her. And now, the thought of her in danger, in Luca's clutches, made my blood boil. I couldn't lose her anymore. The next day, I stepped into Luca's army, my role as a newcomer solidified. I worked hard, keeping my head down while watching everything, listening to every conversation. The men around me were tense, and I could sense their growing fear of Luca. His brutality had pushed them to the edge, and now they were starting to question if they wanted to follow a madman. But my mind stayed on Zoe and the other females out there. I had to find them at any cost. For weeks, Leon and I had been working from the inside, gaining the trust of Luca's pack while secretly plotting to bring him down. Every soldier, every corner of the camp I infiltrated, brought me one step closer to the mission. And now, today, I'd be stationed inside Luca's fortress, a rare privilege not afforded to just anyone. I tugged at my leather armor, which had grown tight over my broad shoulders, reminding me of how much I missed the open air. These uniforms were stiff and uncomfortable, but it was the price of blending in. The fortress loomed over me like a beast made of stone, its cold, towering walls casting long shadows in the evening light. Everything about this place felt wrong, too quiet, too calculated. The other soldiers barely spoke as we entered. Luca's fortress was a place no one wanted to be unless you were on the inside, deep inside his inner circle. But I had earned my place here through sheer force and the unspoken promise of loyalty. At least, that's what Luca believed. I could still feel the cool breeze on my skin as I patrolled the inner halls of Luca's fortress. The place reeked of wealth, polished marble floors, heavy velvet curtains, and chandeliers that dripped with crystal. Yet despite all its luxury, there was a suffocating darkness in the air. Today, my heart beat a little faster. I'd been waiting for this moment. Zoe was here. Somewhere in these halls, locked away like a prized possession. I hadn't even met her yet, but Leon's descriptions of her painted such a vivid picture in my mind. Her intelligence the quiet strength she carried despite all the horrors Luca had thrown her way. I had to find her. As I moved deeper into the fortress, a door ahead of me stood slightly ajar. The room was quiet, save for the faint rustling of fabric. My pulse quickened. This was it. As I peered through the door, my breath caught in my throat. There she was. Zoe standing by the window, completely absorbed in her routine, combing her hair with slow, graceful strokes. Each strand shimmered in the soft light, like dark silk falling over her shoulders. Her skin was soft, her eyes deep pools, lost in her own world. I couldn't move, couldn't tear my eyes away. Watching her like this, so unaware, it felt like I was intruding on a quiet moment of her vulnerability. I pushed the door open and stepped inside. The room was large, a royal suite filled with lavish furniture, soft rugs, and delicate vases. It looked like something out of a fairy tale, but it wasn't the room that stole my breath. It was her. And when she turned and saw me, it was as if time stopped. We locked eyes. And though I had never met her before, I knew her. The bond was instant, like something that had always been there, waiting for this moment. Zoe's lips parted slightly, and I saw the flicker of surprise in her gaze, quickly followed by something else. Curiosity. Maybe even a spark of interest. 
Who are you? She whispered, her voice soft but firm, like she was trying to keep it steady. I swallowed, my mouth suddenly dry. Eric, I said, stepping closer. I have come to rescue you and the others with Leon. Her eyes widened at the mention of Leon's name, and a faint smile tugged at her lips. Leon? He is here? I nodded, feeling a surge of hope between us. Yeah, he's working with me to get you and the others out. We're building an army from the inside. Zoe's expression softened, but a shadow of worry crossed her face. Eric. You don't know how dangerous this is. Luca, he's obsessed. The wedding, he's pushing for it. I'm running out of time. Hearing her say it out loud made my chest tighten. The thought of Luca marrying her, taking her, made my blood boil. I stepped closer, feeling a protective surge I hadn't expected. We'll stop him, I said, my voice low. I won't let him touch you. Zoe studied me, her eyes searching mine for something. Maybe reassurance, maybe strength. We met in secret after that, whenever we could steal a moment. The fortress was crawling with guards, but we found our ways. Little glances across rooms, a brush of hands in passing. Every time, I felt myself falling for her a little more. It wasn't just her beauty that drew me in. Though that was undeniable, she was breathtaking. But it was the way she carried herself, the quiet determination she held on to despite everything, the way she stayed calm under pressure, the way she looked at me like she believed in me, even though we barely knew each other. I admired her strength, and I knew she saw something in me, too. We couldn't deny it any longer. One night, after everyone else had fallen asleep, I crossed the room. She was lying on the bed. She was wearing a silk gown, her hand resting on her hair. She looked like a fairy in the silver moonlight. I couldn't help but glance at her for a moment. I stepped closer. Zoe, I whispered softly in her ears. She slowly opened her eyes, looked at me, and gave a soft smile. She got up from bed. What are you doing here, Eric? she said in a low voice. I just came to tell you that I can't stop thinking about you, I whispered, my voice rough with emotion. Her cheeks blushed and gaze shifted to mine. She pulled a strand of her hair behind her ears. I feel the same way, she admitted, her voice still thick from sleep. My hand moved to her waist, strong and sure, and in an instant, I was pulling her towards me. Our lips met in a heated kiss, and it was like nothing I'd ever felt before. It wasn't soft or gentle, but fierce. It was raw and uncontrollable, and I felt like I was spinning, falling into something I didn't understand but craved more of. My hands moved up her back, my fingers tangling in her hair as I deepened the kiss, and I could feel the hunger in me, the same wild need that was building inside for a long time. My lips brushed against her neck, trailing soft kisses. And then, before I could think, before I could stop myself, I leaned down on her. Zoe hands gripping my arms as if she didn't want to let go. For a moment, nothing else existed. It was just us, caught in the storm of passion that had been building since the moment we met. I could taste the sweetness of her lips, feel the warmth of her body pressed against mine. But then, suddenly, Zoe pulled back, her eyes wide with panic. He's coming, she whispered frantically, her gaze darting to the door. Luca's coming. You have to hide now. My heart picked up its beat, my wrists tightened, my jaws clenched, and every instinct screamed at me to stay, to fight. But Zoe pushed me toward the wardrobe, her eyes pleading. Please, Eric, if he finds you, he'll kill you. You have to hide. Reluctantly, I obeyed, slipping into the wardrobe just as the door to the room swung open. From the crack in the door, I could see Luca stride in, his eyes instantly locking onto Zoe. 
His presence filled the room, radiating power and control. And then I saw it, the way his hand reached out to touch her, possessive and full of lust. My fists clenched as I watched, every muscle in my body coiled with anger. Zoe stood her ground, playing her part perfectly, not giving away a single hint of our secret. But it was torture to watch Luca touch her, knowing there was nothing I could do in that moment. When he finally left, I emerged from my hiding place, rage boiling in my veins. Zoe turned to me, her expression a mixture of relief and sorrow. I'm sorry, she whispered, her voice trembling. I hate this. I pulled her into my arms, holding her tightly. I swear, Zoe, I'll make this right. I'll get you out of here. I'll get everyone out. She looked up at me, her eyes filled with hope and fear. I believe you, Eric. But Zoe, we have to find the others. Do you know where did he keep them? I asked furiously. Luca's keeping them somewhere, hidden I don't know about. I nodded, determination settling over me like armor. We will. We'll figure it out. And as I held her in my arms, I knew one thing for certain. I wasn't going to stop until every last one of Luca's prisoners was free. And Luca? He wouldn't see it coming. The storm was brewing, and this time, we would be the ones to strike. The moon hung low, hidden deep in the forest. It was quiet, save for the occasional rustle of leaves or the distant hoot of an owl. This had become our routine, meeting under the cover of night, far from prying eyes, exchanging whispers that carried the weight of our secret rebellion. I looked over at Leon, who was sitting cross-legged on the grass, his face tense, his jaw clenched as he stared at the flames of the small fire between us. His usual light-hearted demeanor had vanished tonight. That was how I knew whatever he had to say was going to be serious. He took a deep breath before speaking. Eric, Leon began, his voice low, almost a growl. I got word from one of the rebels, someone who used to be in Luca's army. I straightened up, suddenly more alert. The mention of Luca was enough to make my blood boil. Leon continued. He told me about a prison, deep in Luca's fortress. It's where he keeps the women, the ones he's captured. They're being, well, they're not safe, Eric. The soldiers, they're doing horrible things to them. Luca allows it. Leon's voice faltered, his hands curling into fists, the firelight flickering in his eyes. Anger surging through me like wildfire. I had known Luca was a tyrant, a monster even, but hearing this, it was different. I clenched my jaw, fighting the urge to storm the fortress that very second. But I couldn't, not yet. I've been assigned to patrol that part of the fortress tomorrow, I said after a moment. I'll see them. I'll get them out. Leon looked at me, eyes hard but filled with trust. He nodded once. But be careful, Eric. You can't afford any slip-ups. If Luca suspects you're working against him. I know. I cut him off. I'll be careful. But we're running out of time. Luca's wedding to Zoe is coming up fast. And if we don't act soon... My voice trailed off as the thought of Zoe marrying that monster twisted in my chest like a knife. We'll get her out, Leon said, reading my thoughts as usual. We'll get them all out. I nodded in response. The next day, I stood in front of the massive gates of Luca's fortress. The heavy iron doors creaked open. The prison was at the far end of the compound, hidden away from the soldiers' barracks and the grand halls where Luca entertained his guests. I moved quickly, my boots echoing in the stone corridors, trying to blend in as just another of Luca's loyal men. But inside, I felt like a traitor, a good kind, though. If I played this right, it would all be worth it. When I reached the prison, my stomach twisted. The stench of fear hung thick in the air, the dim light casting shadows on the faces of the women locked inside. 
Some were huddled in corners, their eyes hollow, their bodies trembling. Others stared blankly at the walls, lost in a world of their own pain. As I walked past their cells, a few of them from my pack recognized me. I saw the flicker of hope in their eyes, and I gave them the faintest signal to stay quiet. They knew. Somehow, they knew I wasn't here to hurt them. I was here to save them. Their silent trust only made my resolve stronger. But we couldn't act yet. Not until the time was right. I just needed to figure out how to get them out, without raising any alarms. Later that night, as I returned to my quarters, the image of those women haunted me. I felt helpless, but I had to stay focused. There was a bigger picture. Zoe. Getting her out. Saving her from this nightmare. But every time I thought of Luca touching her, standing next to her at the altar, my vision blurred with rage. I found myself standing outside Zoe's window, the pale moonlight filtering through the curtains. I didn't mean to, but my feet led me there. It was reckless, but I couldn't help it. I needed to see her. Eric? Her voice was soft, surprised, but not fearful. Zoe stood by the window, her hair cascading down her shoulders, wearing a simple dress. She looked like a dream. My dream. And I couldn't believe how close we were, yet so far apart. Zoe, I whispered, my voice catching. Everything unsaid. She stepped closer. I don't want to marry him, Eric. You know that. But what choice do I have? Her voice cracked, and for the first time, I saw her vulnerability, the weight of the world pressing down on her. I took her hand, pulling her closer, until our foreheads touched. The world outside didn't matter anymore. It was just us, in this stolen moment. We'll find a way out, I promised, my voice barely a whisper. I'll get you out, I swear. Zoe looked up at me, her lips parting slightly, as if she wanted to believe me but was too scared to hope. The space between us shrank until there was nothing left, and I kissed her. Soft, slow, like we had all the time in the world, even though we didn't. Her hands found my chest, gripping my shirt like she was holding on for dear life. I deepened the kiss, pouring every ounce of my love, my desperation, my fear into it. She was the only thing that mattered now, and I wasn't going to let Luca take her from me. When we finally pulled apart, we were both breathless, our foreheads still touching. Promise me, she whispered, her voice trembling. Promise you'll come for me. I cupped her face in my hands, my thumbs brushing away the stray tears. I promise. As I slipped back into the night, the weight of my promise settled heavy on my shoulders. I didn't know how we were going to pull this off, but one thing was clear. I was going to save Zoe. I was going to save all of them. But time was running out, and Luca's shadow loomed larger with each passing day. The air was thick with tension as we huddled around the map, the dim light of the lantern casting flickering shadows on Leon's face. His sharp eyes scanned every inch of it, his mind already racing three steps ahead. I could always count on Leon to think of every angle, every possibility. But tonight, it felt heavier, like we were standing on the edge of something we couldn't come back from. This is it, Leon muttered, his finger tracing the perimeter of Luca's stronghold. We hit them here first. The gates are already weakened from the inside. If we time this right, their defenses will crumble before they even know what's happening. I nodded, feeling the familiar weight of responsibility settle on my shoulders. The final days were coming, and we had no choice but to push forward. Failure wasn't an option, not with Zoe still trapped in that hell. My chest tightened at the thought of her alone in Luca's clutches, knowing time was running out. Every second counted. Eric, 
Leon said, breaking me out of my thoughts. We've got to stay sharp. Once the gates fall, all hell will break loose. That's where you come in. His eyes met mine, serious but full of trust. We need your strength out there, leading the charge. I gripped the edge of the table, nodding again. I'll be ready. But Leon, what about the women? We need to get them out safely before the fighting starts. Leon's gaze softened for a brief second, the tension easing just a bit. I've got that covered. They'll be out of harm's way before the first blow is struck. There was something about Leon's calm that kept the anxiety from gnawing at me completely. But as much as I trusted him, as much as we had planned, nothing could shake the dread that came with knowing what was at stake. Zoe's face flashed in my mind, the way she had smiled at me that night, her eyes full of hope, even as danger closed in around us. I couldn't fail her. I wouldn't. What if it's not enough? I asked, my voice low. Leon looked up, his expression hardening. Then we make it enough, no matter what. Tomorrow is our final day. I and Leon met for the final discussion. I know you will defeat Luca. I believe you, my dear friend. Saying this, he hugged me. I too hugged him back. His words boosted my confidence. The moon hung low in the sky, casting a cold, silver light over Luca's territory. It was eerily quiet, the kind of quiet that settles before a storm. It's our final day. My pulse quickened as I moved through the trees, Leon by my side. Behind us, our small but growing army of wolves followed silently, their eyes glinting in the darkness, ready for what was to come. Every step felt heavier than the last. The weight of the coming battle sat in my chest like a stone, but it was the thought of Zoe that kept my feet moving. I could see her in my mind's eye, waiting trusting that I'd come through for her. I clenched my fists, my claws threatening to break through the skin. Leon nudged me with his elbow, a small grin on his face despite everything. You ready for this? He asked, his voice steady in the face of chaos. I let out a breath I didn't realize I was holding. Yeah, more than ready. Our plan was solid. We had to move fast. Luca's army was strong, but we had an edge. The witch's potion was our secret weapon, and I had sprinkled it all around the camp under the cover of night. It would buy us time, putting most of Luca's soldiers in a deep, temporary slumber. But time was slipping away, and we couldn't afford to waste a second. Let's get these women out first, Leon whispered, his sharp eyes scanning the camp. I nodded watching as the freed female werewolves crept silently through the shadows, moving quickly toward the escape routes Leon had scouted. They were strong, fierce women, but they were also prisoners of Luca's cruelty, and we owed it to them to get them home. Zoe was among them. My chest tightened at the thought of her being caught in the crossfire. I couldn't let that happen. We waited in tense silence until the last of them had slipped through the gates, before Luca and his army could rise all the women, Zoe and the group of allied werewolves were on their feet for the battle fight hand in hand with Luca's army. I moved deeper into Luca's territory, blending into the chaos. Thanks to the potion, half his soldiers were still snoring, sprawled out like they were taking the world's longest nap. I smirked, but there was no time to enjoy the moment. Luca would wake soon, and when he did, all hell would break loose. Eric, you got this? Leon's voice came through the small earpiece we had rigged up. Yeah, I muttered. Just keep them safe, okay? Leon chuckled. You focus on not getting yourself killed. As I moved closer to Luca's command tent, I fed false orders to a few of his groggy officers, sending them straight outside the fortress where our army were waiting for their welcome. The more chaos I could create, the better. By the time they realized what was happening, it would be too late. I turned the corner just as the first rays of light hit Luca's tent. The guards were starting to stir, their eyes flickering open as the potion wore off. 
It was now or never. With a deep breath, I stepped into the clearing. Luca was standing there, still groggy but very much awake. His dark eyes locked on mine, and I could see the moment he realized who I really was. You, he spat, his voice dripping with venom. Traitor. Surprised? I smirked, though my heart was racing. Luca's lip curled in a snarl. You think you can take me down, Eric? You're nothing but Leon's lapdog. That hit a nerve, but I didn't let it show. Your army's already crumbling. Half of them have already died in the battle fighting our army. The women whom you kept them as hostages are free and fighting with your soldiers. He laughed, but it was cold and humorless. You'll never be more than a follower. Leon second. You're not alpha material. I clenched my fists. Every muscle in my body tensed as I prepared to shift, the heat of the moment coursing through me. I could feel the power building beneath my skin, the transformation waiting just beneath the surface. Luca's sneer was full of malice. He knew this was it, the final battle. Without a word, we both let go of our human forms. The change was swift, our bodies shifting in a painful yet freeing transformation. Bones realigned, muscles expanded, and fur covered our skin. In wolf form, I felt the surge of strength and heightened senses, every sound, every scent around me becoming sharper. Luca's transformation was equally intense, his werewolf form towering over me. His black fur bristled, and I could feel the raw energy radiating off him. His blood-red eyes glinted dangerously, a deep growl rumbling in his chest. The fight was brutal. He came at me with everything he had, every ounce of rage and power. We clashed, blow for blow, our bodies colliding like two forces of nature. His strength was raw, overwhelming, but I fought with precision, with control. Every hit he landed felt like it would shatter me, but I stood my ground. For Zoe, for the pack, for everything that mattered. You'll never win, Luca roared, swinging wildly. His fist grazed my cheek, sending a sharp pain through my skull. I staggered but kept my focus. I'm not fighting for me, I growled. I'm fighting for all of us. Luca sneered, but before he could swing again, a loud crack echoed across the battlefield. Leon, his traps. Luca's soldiers screamed as the ground beneath them gave way, the bridge collapsing, cutting off their reinforcements. Luca's face twisted in fury, and in that moment, his attention wavered. I didn't hesitate. With a roar, I launched myself at him, my fists connecting with his ribs, his jaw, his chest. Each hit was filled with everything I had, all the anger, the fear, the love. I wasn't fighting for power. I was fighting for the future, for Zoe, for the pack, for all the women Luca had tried to take. Luca staggered, blood trickling from the corner of his mouth. But he wasn't done yet. He lunged again, but this time, Leon was there. With a swift, calculated move, Leon set off the final trap, sending Luca crashing to the ground, his body pinned by debris. I stood over him, panting, my body screaming in pain, but I wasn't finished. My hand hovered over his throat, ready to end it. Do it! Luca spat, his eyes burning with hate. You'll never be strong enough. But before I could make the final blow, Leon's voice cut through the haze. Eric, stop. I hesitated, my breathing ragged. He deserves it. Leon stepped closer, his hand resting on my shoulder. Yeah, but we're not him. Let him face judgment. He should be taken to the prison in our territory. For a moment, all I could hear nothing. But then I dropped my hand, stepping back. Luca was done. The battle was over, and the field was quiet. The sun was setting, casting a soft glow over everything. We had won, but I felt exhausted, like the weight of everything had finally hit me. 
As Leon and I made our way back to camp, the exhaustion started to hit me. Every step was heavier, my body aching from the fight, but there was a sense of calm settling over me too, a feeling that it was finally over. Luca was defeated. The firelight flickered in the distance, and as we stepped into the clearing, I saw them. Zoe, along with the rest of the pack, waiting anxiously. Zoe was the first to rush forward, her eyes wide with relief. Without saying a word, she knelt beside me, gently inspecting my wounds. Her touch was soft, but her hands trembled slightly, betraying the worry she had been holding in. You're hurt, she whispered, her voice laced with concern. But there was something else in her eyes, too. Gratitude, yes, but deeper than that. I could see the admiration in her eyes. She shook her head, tears welling up in her eyes. You did this. You saved us all. I wrapped my arms around her, pulling her close. Her body fit perfectly against mine, and for the first time in what felt like forever, I felt at peace. She looked up at me, her eyes soft and full of something deeper. Admiration. Respect. Love. A few of the other women approached, their expressions a mixture of gratitude and awe. Leon and I had fought for them, but it was their courage that had kept us all going. They had stood their ground on the battlefield, side by side with us, never wavering. Thank you, one of the women said, her voice thick with emotion. You saved us. Leon and I exchanged a glance. He was still catching his breath, his face a mix of pride and disbelief. This wasn't just our victory. It belonged to all of us. No, I said, shaking my head. It wasn't just us. You were all brave out there, every one of you. You fought with heart, with everything you had. Don't ever forget that. The women looked at me, their faces softening, but I meant every word. I wasn't just trying to be polite. The balance of life, the strength of the pack, depended on all of us. We all have our roles, I continued, my voice firm. Male or female, we're equally important in this world. We balance each other, and that's why we win, because we stand together. Zoe's eyes flickered with something. Pride, maybe? Respect? She didn't say anything, but I could feel the shift between us, the way her admiration deepened with those words. Leon, meanwhile, was getting his moment. The women and men alike were approaching him, patting him on the back, offering words of thanks and praise. He had always been the quiet, brilliant one, never fully recognized for his contribution, but now he was being embraced as the hero he truly was, He'd outmaneuvered Luca at every turn, his sharp mind and quick thinking just as vital as my strength in battle. You've earned this, I told him quietly, watching as he nodded humbly. You've always had it in you. Leon gave me a small smile, the weight of the moment settling on both of us. We had fought side by side, each playing to our strengths, and together we had brought down the biggest threat to our pack. As I looked around at my pack, at Zoe, at Leon, at the brave men and women who had stood with us, I felt a deep sense of pride and belonging. This wasn't just about defeating Luca. It was about proving to ourselves, to each other, that we had the strength to overcome anything. Zoe's hand brushed mine, a silent reminder that even in victory, there was still so much to fight for. For her. For them. For all of us.